One of the things that is near and dear to my heart is interviewing. As executive producer, I'm frequently tasked with interviewing for corporate culture fit. And I've interviewed a couple hundred people in the last probably five years, and closing in on five or 600 people over the last 14 years. People make some mistakes. They're amusing, and I'm gonna share some of them with you. So the newest mistake that only exists probably in the last couple of years is social networking faux pas. So for anybody who's never interviewed, yeah, we look. I check out your Facebook page, your LinkedIn, your Twitter feed. I so absolutely look. That thing of you going, Ugh! all drunk and wasted, I saw that. So my pro tip is don't post those and certainly don't make them available for the rest of the world to see. That's actually a really bad idea. Um, we have looked at people's private lives, because they've allowed us to, and made a decision to not even interview them based on that. So very seriously, if you're wondering why no one's interviewing you and you're having problems getting interviews, double check your Facebook and your social networking stuff. Maybe it's not as professional as it should be. Um, one of the... Uh, more amusing things, someone comes in and I go, hey, I work for Game Salad, why do you want it for Game Salad? And they go, uh, I want to make games. Um, we're a tools company. <laughs> Whoops. So do your research on the company that you are interviewing at. <laughs> There's a lot of times when they've just answered something or you can tell they're kind of making it up and you're like, you didn't even look at our website. Because if you'd gone into the first homepage, you'd have found out we were a tools company. And the second one is, and this is really important, especially for those of us who have uh, gender non-specific names, do your research on the people who are interviewing you. You know, it's one thing to, you know, look at someone's name, you're gonna be introduced to Jennifer Bullard. Yeah, you're probably posits it's female, but some of my colleagues, such as Mrs. or Miss Snyder out here, she's a woman. So when someone walks up and says, hey, can I talk to Mr. Snyder? Yeah, that's not gonna go well. And I've had that happen to me before. Um, on occasions they assumed that the Jay Bullard they were going to talk to was like John. Sorry guys, no. Um, be on time. I don't know how to explain that any more than just for the love of God, please be on time. Nothing like having an interviewee show up 10 minutes late because my schedule is super tight and so is everybody else's and now you've just kind of borked my day. So not a good way to start off on the right foot. And I wanted to go through them quickly because I got to go over dress and act appropriately. And I'm going to cover both genders. So yeah, I know we're the game industry and we can all dress really casual and relaxed, but um, no foot funk. Okay, guys? Like if you're going to have, you know, open-toed shoes, wash them. <laughs> Don't play with them in the interview and then expect me to shake your hand. <laughs> You guys are laughing. This has all happened to me. Okay? You walk in and it's hot outside. Bring in some like wet naps or some baby wipes and hit the bathroom first. Because, man, I've actually entered, ended interviews early because he stunk so bad I couldn't stand it. The other thing, too, brush your teeth and floss. You know, a little bit of spinach, one thing. But, oh my God, if you haven't like flossed your teeth in three years, that's so nasty. I'm sorry, but Tess is laughing because we both we've experienced these things, right? Ladies, sparkly glitter in the cleavage, really inappropriate. White tank tops, not appropriate for interview wear. No. Um, some of the other, for guys either. Oh God, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, mesh shirts, short shorts. Let's just know, okay? The game industry has a dress code. It's jeans and at least a clean, non-mustard stained T-shirt. You know, if you're gonna at least have stains, you know, barbecue sauce, okay. Um, but we much prefer none of that. I will accept anything. Oh, and the other one too, be really careful about shirts with logos and phrases. Cause you know, the guy that walked in, and I'm not kidding, says yo bitch on his shirt, <laughs> did not get the job. Um, you know, those are just kind of those, some of those short little pro tips that I like to uh, throw out there every once in a while. Something inside the interview, once you get in there and we start talking, be positive. 
I know we all work really long hours and some days it's really hard to be positive and upbeat, especially if you just left a super crunchy job. But man, if you come out and the only thing you're doing is bagging people, and I know them, and I know why those decisions are made, you just look kind of whiny. So even if you're in the right, don't slam your old company. Don't sit there and tell everybody how horrible of an experience is. Because every once in a while, I'll be like, yeah, that person that started that company, that's my best friend for like 12 years. So yeah, be real careful about that kind of stuff. Um, and also remember, everybody matters. I love doing tricks like this. I love sitting at the front desk and pretending I'm the secretary. So I walk in, I'll sit there and be like, hi, how you doing? They're like, hey, I'm looking at somebody else who's not you. I'm like, can I help you? Oh, yeah, I'm here to see somebody important who's not you. I'm like, who are you looking for? I'm looking for Jay Bullard. I'm Jay Bullard. Nice to meet you. So, you know, these kinds of things. Every secretary, every QA person, every everything. A lot of times interviews are set up and purposely designed to see how you're going to interact with other disciplines, which leads into my next point. When you have a portfolio, and you should show up with one, even if you are a designer, an artist, or a programmer, or a producer, something that says, this is what I've done in the past and I could show you, um, make sure you can explain your craft to other people in other disciplines and why is that important. Um, Nothing like having a programmer. I sit next to them and I'm sitting there with my associate producer. And we're like, so, this engineer wrote this piece of code on a piece of paper for me. I actually don't know anything about it. Your job in this interview is to explain it to me. Why is this a problem? What does it mean? And what do I do about it? You'd be surprised at the number of stunned looks. I've had. And I pull something pretty much similar when I'm dealing with artists and designers. I always ask them, like, how do you express your point of view without offending a vice president or something else? How do you handle QA feedback? So always be prepared to not only justify your skill set from a technical point of view to the people that you're going to directly work with in your discipline, but also make sure that the other disciplines, you're explaining how well you're going to work with them. Because that's what I care about. I always care about those are the real team fit things. Um, brush up on the lingo, especially if you're going to jump ship and you're going to go from console to PC or you're going to go from hardcore gaming to social media. Know what it means. You know, ARPU is actually a thing. It's not something your dog just did. <laughs> Knowing what that is is always a good idea. So know what the lingo is for the companies you're going to go and interview at. Once again, this goes back to do your research. I'm getting my two-minute mark here. Um, one of the other things that we have is it's okay if you don't know the answer. A lot of times we're going to ask you a question and you are not going to know the answer. And the reason we're doing that is we want to find out how do you think? How do you approach a problem? What are the way do you problem solve? That's a really big uh, thing for us to know about. You know, it's really important as an interviewer to know how does this person think? How are they going to approach a problem? Um, and try and work with us on this one. And of course, the last one is, if you get really, really nervous, just take a deep breath. Realize the other person sitting across the table is probably as uncomfortable as you are and probably wants to get out of that uncomfortable, warm room as quickly as possible, too. <laughs> and those are my interviewing tips. Thank you very much.